The girl may be young, but no one dares to mess with her, because her father, he was very powerful. He once killed 73 men in a row with just a toothpick. But such a tough guy. And yet the little fat man tried to bully his daughter. He took off the girl's hat with a mockery on his face. Give it back. You scared? I said, give it back. The fatty pushed the girl straight down. Fatty gestures at her face and asks if she's going to cry. I asked you twice. The girl punched him in the stomach. She then drops the boy with a right hook. The girl then picks up her hat and walks away in style. And the fat boy's nose was broken. Both parents were invited to school by the teacher for the fight. Fatty's mother had a hot temper. When she saw Jason, she came straight at him and tried to arrest him. But the teacher talked her out of it. She thought that was the end of it. But Jason had just walked his daughter out of the school. They ran into Fatty's family. Fatty's mother encouraged her husband to go after Jason so as not to lose face. The man pushed Jason with his hands in a vicious manner. Jason didn't want to make a bad impression on his daughter. He turned to leave. But the man suddenly threw a punch. Jason blocked and turned around and took the man down. He then swats the man's arm away at 90 degrees. The trouble is over. Jason was ready to leave. But his daughter reminds him that there's something wrong with the look in the little fat mother's eyes. She hadn't been beaten in all her years. Now both her son and husband were being beaten up. Her eyes were cold and she seemed to be plotting something. And sure enough, that night she found his brother Tom. Tom was a flour mill owner known to the local police and bandits. He promised his sister that he would find someone to get Jason. The next day Jason learns from his teacher. Fatty's father's arm had been broken by himself. He realized he had hit him too hard. Out of guilt he went to the factory where Fatty's father worked. He apologized sincerely to the man. Seeing how sincere Jason was, the man chose to forgive. But he didn't know that his wife had already called for someone. Jason leaves and finds a cheap gas station. He had just put the gas gun in the tank. Suddenly a red pickup truck came up behind him. A couple of burly guys got out of the truck right away. They look like they've just been drinking and eating. Can't get that pump on. I'm almost done. See I need to goddamn pump right now. And that's when a few more guys came around. But they didn't know that. Jason wasn't as easy to pick on as the average guy. Jason was running out of gas. And one of the guys comes up and provokes him. Drop the truck line. Jason took it in stride. He just wanted to get gas and not get into trouble. The big guy says to Jason you better not open the valve. Jason ignores the guys and pulls the trigger and keeps pumping. The big guy comes up to him and starts swearing. At the same time he reaches for the petrol gun. Jason pulls out the gun and gives it a good thump. He slammed his head against the wall, straightening his duck cap. He poofed a kick at the man coming from the side. Then he presses his iron head against the bonnet and takes another man down. He turns his head to dodge a hard punch. He grabs an arm uppercut, a big top knee and clatters the glass. Then a low leg sweep to end the fight. He asks the man who sent him. But the man doesn't say a word. He says no one sent him. Jason ignores them. He drove off in his pickup. And Tom got a call from his brother. He was furious on the spot. He decided to take matters into his own hands. That same day, Tom went to Jason's house. Jason was out riding with his daughter. But they didn't see Tom. Tom slashed the tires of Jason's pickup truck with a knife. Then he snuck into the house. In the basement he found some strange files. He took one out and opened it. It was Jason's personal information. At that moment the sound of horses came from outside the house. He rushed to pick up the file and took a live cat and a rabbit doll and left quickly. In the evening his daughter suddenly notices that the cat is missing. Jason immediately went out to look for it. But when he found the pickup truck. He found a punctured tire. His Mediterranean sensibilities made him realize something was wrong. Sure enough, he found something in a nearby tree. He got closer and saw that it was half the head of his daughter's rabbit doll. It was a blatant threat. Meanwhile, Tom goes through Jason's files. He discovered a shocking secret. He immediately contacted his girlfriend out of town to meet her. It turns out that Jason was once a top FBL. On one of his missions, Jason managed to capture the drug lord Nick. But Nick's son was shot and killed in a shootout. And when Nick was arrested, he swore that he would make Jason's family pay for the safety of his family. Jason had to quit his job and go into hiding. And Tom's girlfriend used to work for Nick. They decided to give Jason's information to Nick in exchange for flour ingredients to expand his business. That night, Tom's girlfriend gave the information to Nick's men. In prison, Nick soon gets the information. 
He immediately had his men pass on his orders to send his best killers to kill Jason. On the other hand, Jason was picking up his daughter from school. He always ran into Fatty and his mother. In fact, after many days, Fatty's mother's anger had subsided a bit. Jason's daughter even invited Fatty to play at her house. The two families had made up by default. But no one knew that Tom had done something fatal. The other day John, a neighbor, was helping Jason clean up his yard when he reminded him that Fatty's uncle likes to slash people's tires. And Jason's pickup truck might have been stabbed by him. Jason immediately found Tom and his girlfriend in a bar. He confronted Tom about whether he had stabbed the pickup. But Tom kept denying it. But when Jason walked out of the bar, he got a text message. It was a message from a former colleague about Tom's girlfriend. When he learns that the woman used to work for Nick, he instantly realizes that his cover might be blown. At a reservoir, he finds Tom's flour mill. The mill was full of flour equipment. He lifted the counter, which was stuffed with wrapped flour. His professional instincts lead Jason to destroy the place. How do you destroy a flour mill without leaving a trace? Drill a small hole in a light bulb. Then use a large syringe to fill the hole with petrol. Then he reattached the bulb to the shade. Finally, the gasoline was spread on the flour table. With that done, Jason was ready to leave. But then he suddenly saw his daughter's cat. He carefully went up to pick up the cat. But suddenly, he wakes up again. He had been surrounded by some strong men. They were the same guys from the gas station that day. They were beating Jason up. His hands were tied firmly in place. But don't think that's going to stop Jason. After the beating, the fat guy said he wanted to teach his daughter a lesson. The next thing you know, Jason's doing an iron head kick. He gets up and clicks, turns around and kicks another man down. A sidekick puts another man down. Even if Jason didn't use his hands, these guys were no match for him. After the fight was over, Jason picked up his hat. He greeted the fat man who had said he would teach him a lesson. When he got home, Jason rushed to get his bags and take his daughter away because he knew someone would be looking for him soon. And sure enough, on the other side, Nick's men had found Tom. Tom wasn't expecting so many killers. He didn't want to be a part of it. He chose to let his girlfriend lead the way for Nick's men. That night, the killers arrived at Jason's house. A man walks into the horse corral with a gun. But Jason's neighbor, John, just happens to see him. He was pinned down by a trident. Noticing the danger, John honked his car horn to warn Jason. But the next moment he was shot by another killer. Jason hears this and immediately turns off all the lights. Then he rushed to hide his daughter in the basement. He then hid his daughter in the basement while he pulled a double barrel out of the box. A man kicks in the door. But the shot scares his daughter into screaming and the enemy finds her. Jason and the enemy go head to head. His daughter runs deep into the woods. Jason tries to protect his daughter but is intercepted by one of the enemies. But his daughter crashes into Tom's girlfriend. By the time Jason had finished with the enemy, Tom's girlfriend had already taken her away in her boat. He grabbed a police car and went to rescue his daughter. And when Tom saw the girl being brought to him, he was furious. He didn't want to be involved in this. But now he's got his face in front of the girl. To save his own life, he grabbed a gun and tried to kill her. But then his sister suddenly came to him. She asked Tom if he had anything to do with the disappearance of Jason's daughter. Tom tried to deny it. But the noise of the girl in the house caught her attention. She tried to turn on the lights to check. The mechanism Jason had set up earlier had destroyed the whole building. Tom's heart broke at the sight. The factory he had worked so hard to build had been destroyed. He was furious and tried to steal the girl from his sister to make a deal with Big Brother. But during the argument, he accidentally shot his sister. Tom didn't have time to think. He dragged the girl to the car and fled. And Jason arrived just in time to give chase. He was about to run out of town. The police rushed to have the bridge broken off in front of them. But Jason tried to save his daughter and forced his way across. Jason was trapped in the car. Tom had a gun and was about to kill him. His daughter screams for Tom to let him go. Just as Tom turned around, Jason took the opportunity to knock Tom's weapon away. Jason then went on a hammering rampage against him. In the end, he got his gun and tried to kill Tom. But that's when he saw his daughter standing by. He didn't want his daughter to see this. He finally put his weapon away. She just saved your life. <clears throat> a few days later someone came to visit Nick in prison. He thought his men had brought him good news. Instead, he saw Jason. I'll be waiting. Well, I'll see you next time.